we've also got Colm. Colm runs a film school, which he will tell you about probably. I'm sure. <laughs> Thanks, right. Yolanda. Um, Colm is also based in Parramatta, so it's great to have our local community getting together and making great films and teaching and learning and you know moving forward. So, Colm, tell us about what you do, what you achieve, what you don't do, anything. Fair enough. Okay. Um, Oh, thanks everyone for letting me have a quick chat here tonight. Uh, Yolanda asked me to speak a couple of weeks ago and I said I'm very happy to talk for about five to ten minutes uh, about the Indie Film Centre and about indie filmmaking in general. First, I just want to say I saw your film. It was fantastic. I really, really loved it. So, well done. And that's why I was curious how much it was made for. But it was an exceptional film and you guys are lucky because you're going to get to see it tonight. Uh, you're in for a treat. Uh, one of many great films that you'll see later on this evening in the Cause Film Festival. Uh, yes, we're, uh, my name is Colin Mamurku and I'm from the Indie Film Centre, uh, which is up at Villiers Street, about 200 metres from here actually, just across the park. We're in a three-storey building there. And uh, we call ourselves the Indie Film Centre, and we thought that was a great idea, but, you know, over recent time we've been thinking of changing it because everyone rings up and says, oh, is that the Indian Film Centre? And so uh, <laughs> we've, um, we may change it to the Independent Film Centre. And our whole mission is to help emerging filmmakers make low budget films. Um, <clears throat> we have a lot of gear, so we use black and white. Fortunately, don't shoot in film anymore, it's way too expensive even though I love film, I still love film. Uh, always has that amazing look still, and that's why the very top filmmakers in the world still use it, like Christopher Nolan. But we're, unfortunately, we're down at the low end of the scale where everything has to be shot low budget. Therefore, we use digital, and our main camera of choice now is the Blackmagic, um, which is a very, very inexpensive to buy the actual camera body, but when you get all the add-ons, it's about ten to fifteen thousand dollars to get the lenses, to get the cage, to get the follow focus, to get the rails, everything like that. All costs money, plus tripods, uh, lighting, sound tracks, all of that gear. So we have it all there, and we um, have three-month film courses where people learn how to make a film by actually making one. So the whole purpose of the three-month film course is for people to go through the process of making a film professionally. So uh, to actually cast a film with, with working actors, to go through Star Now, and I know you were in one of them <laughs> many years ago, uh, called Weekend Warriors. Um, so, you know, a lot of actors come through Star Now and we teach them how to cast properly, even though a lot of the filmmakers are very inexperienced, at least they're getting past that fear of casting and working with actors who are of a decent level. Um, we also teach them the importance of post-production, of editing and sound post, because they're two very important areas in the filmmaking process that a lot of people get tripped up on when they're making their films without any training. And then we support them afterwards with Indie Film Club, which is a club <coughs> for the very enthusiastic indie filmmakers to come back and pitch their projects, show their finished films, and look for help, look for support, look for crew, look for production management staff, all of the various elements that make a film happen. And we always, because a lot of these films are made in the smell of an oily rag, like a lot of people do them these days, um, we encourage them to have deadlines, because if they don't have deadlines, um, a lot of times, they lose focus. So after the three-month film course, we have people come back and do advanced training. I know Jack is on one of the advanced courses at the moment, even though he's a great DOP. Uh, and what we just launched very recently is our second weekend feature film. Um, we call ourselves Weekend Warriors, just like the short film, where we go out and we shoot a, a film of 27 days shooting, four days a weekend, and we use the very best people from the courses working on it to get their first IMDb credit on a feature film. And the great things about a feature film, and I'm not putting down short films or anything, 
But feature films actually sell. So a 90-minute film actually sells in the marketplace. And uh, we go a lot to the AFM, which is the American film market. And at those markets, you find people called sales agents, which are always looking for a new product. And they're the people who actually sell the film onto the world. And that's the great thing about a feature length project, 90 minutes long. You actually get it out to a worldwide audience of millions of people. What I think you probably found with the short film, I don't know if this is true, but you're kind of restricted to film festivals and a bit of online. Uh, with feature films, you get to a worldwide audience and you never know, you can sometimes get cinema release as well, which you've seen from time to time with low budget indies. Uh, it has happened to a few Australian, not very often, that were made in extremely low budgets, but it has happened that they've had cinema screenings. So, uh, weekend feature films, I encourage you. How many of you here are actually making films? I'm just curious. How many are actual directors, producers? So there's about four or five of you. I encourage you guys to look into this weekend film model. It's a really good model. And uh, actors are happy, crew are happy, everyone has a great time. Provided you have a good script, and the script, as we all know, is extremely important, so spend time working on that. But once you have that great script, you can get out and shoot these things for under $40,000, um, which, you know, is hardly any money. Provided you have the gear, provided you already own some gear, or have access to someone like Jack, who owns the gear, and that's what we do at the Indie Film Centre. We get people access to the gear. So they can go out and make these films for next to nothing. And the excitement and the fun, I mean, there's nothing like it when you're shooting a, a low-budget feature film. It's so much more exciting than a short. I'm not putting down shorts because we use them all the time for people to learn. I mean, I wouldn't advise someone who's never made a film to go out and make a weekend feature. You need to make a few good shorts first. But a weekend feature will just bring you to that next level if you've got a um, couple of shorts under your belt that are, have done some festival circuit. Alrighty, I think, look, um, that's just a quick summary in the Indie Film Centre. I'm very happy to take questions, if there is any questions. I know everyone was a little bit question shy last time, so I was the only one who asked anything. Go for it. What's the uh, course run for? Uh, we do them three times a year. So, oh, how much are they? They're, uh, the three-monther is around two and a half grand, uh, all up. And that includes all the gear, everything, all the training. Um, well, with the, the, the three-month course films, because they're a demonstration film, we do revolving crews. So everyone gets a go at every aspect of the crew, because it's important when people are learning to know all the different aspects, to know what a soundy goes through. Tonight, for example, I left, they were training on sound. So we have a very experienced sound recordist in who works on movies all the time, and he's teaching them how to do effective location sound. Now, look, maybe a lot of people will never come sound recordists. But as a director or even a producer, to know what that person has to go through to actually experience it is a really good thing. And uh, I think today with so many indie filmmakers, a lot of us have to have a couple of roles, i.e. director, writer, editor, <laughs> to make a living out of it, you know, to, to keep making a living. Do you, do you get some kind of qualification after the three months? Yeah, we, we always give everyone a, <coughs> a certificate at the end of it. But the main thing that we encourage is that they hire gear from us, and we'll always do it half the price of Limac or Dragon Image, whatever. If they can get a quote from a professional place, we'll do half the price for the same gear. Um, so that's for people who are doing short films and non-profit films. So it can end up being very, very inexpensive to get your gear. Yeah, go for it. Uh, do you rent out any equipment to external filmmakers? We tend to keep it more for the things that are on the course because there's a lot of demand for it. So, <laughs> but I, you know, if I know you, um, you know, hand us a card and we can talk. Yeah, <laughs> sure. Uh, we made one called the Makeover. Um, the Makeover was a low-budget feature. Um, see you, Julie. Sorry, I'm just going to interrupt. I just wanted to to say thank you to Paramatta and Julie, Julie Evans for being here. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.
you want me to fi finish up soon? Or? No, no. Yeah. no, no I'm um, <laughs> I'm sorry, what was the question? The last question there? Oh, yeah. The yeah. Blood River. Yeah. Yeah. The Blood River is it's a really good success. We made that on the weekend. Uh, shot it for next to nothing. And it sold to pay TV in Europe. It did DVD in the block blockbusters here release. We didn't get cinema release. Uh, we won Best Comedy Drama at the New York Film Festival. Uh, at this stage in YouTube, we're up to 2 million, uh, I think it's 390,000 views on YouTube for that particular film. You can see it yourself. <laughs> um, we also made Dealing with Destiny. That was a $1 million budget. Um, so that was a 90 minute feature. And that, we were the ones who discovered the in excess actor, Luke Arnold. So Luke Arnold uh, had his first role with us. Uh, there was one actor here, I think it was yourself, you, you played a small little uh, two-worder or something, was it? One of the workmen in one of the scenes yeah. in Dealing with Destiny. Yeah, method actors, years of drama school. Yeah. And we've done a lot of uh, you know, very, very cool short films that are at a very high advanced level as well, um, that have done well on the festival circuit. I showed, I just sent one that we just finished to Yolandi, I don't know what you thought of it, but you said you might put it in next year's festival, so. <laughs> We will. Yeah. Any last questions? Or, I'm conscious that I'm taking up time here, so. No, take time. Yeah. What are you working on? Uh, Tabernacle 101, a supernatural thriller, 90 minutes long, um, we start shooting in November. Uh, we're doing it over six months, four day shoots and five day shoots once every month and that way you get loads of time to prepare between each shoot we're in casting so any actors who'd like to come to a casting tomorrow we're casting tomorrow um, so for um, two roles at the moment the two leads we've basically got the two supporting leads um, and we're really looking forward to doing it it's going to be an awesome film it's going to be really spooky as well and Jack is going to be on it as well so he's going to be there at casting tomorrow yeah Well, they shot 27 days. That's the equivalent of about five and a half weeks in a feature film. You do four days over the weekend. Yeah. Four to five days, depending on, like around, I know in January is our first five day. Then we'd we'll probably just keep hitting five days after that. But it's a way for people who are on the way up to get their first credit and get a film that wouldn't be made through the system. But we're also putting another one, Absolute Freedom, and that's going through, uh, that's a two and a half million dollar budget. You've read the script. I think you liked it. <laughs> yeah, um, and that one's two and a half mil, but uh, that's an action romance and we want proper money for that. So we were nearly financed there a few months ago, but uh, it's tricky getting financed these days. So that should be coming up in the next year or two. But yeah, the one thing, one thing just to finish, if you're making something success breeds, uh, work, work begets work. I'll always say that. If you're actually making something, it attracts something else to you. Uh, sometimes when you get really stuck, you're usually doing nothing. But if you actually go out and do a weekender, I remember on the last one, everyone, Martin, Martin Dinglewall, Lara Cox, they all started getting big roles. Lara Cox got a major role in a wrestling film over in America that you know, got released in all the cinemas over there. Um, so everyone started rising up. It was just amazing to see everyone who was on the film just got really, really lucky around the time of the making of the film and the release. Yeah, well, okay, thanks guys. I think I should uh, go. Was, um, enjoy the festival tonight. The films are great. Uh, look forward to speaking to you later. Thank you. Thank you so much, Colin.